Hi everyone, my name is Bonnie Rocky and I am part of North America Cloud Specialist team. I specialize in the integration services that includes the Oracle Integration Cloud. In this video, we are going to see how to set up and configure Oracle Integration Gen 2 instances for FSDR, that is Full Stack Disaster Recovery Service in OCI. We will be concentrating around setting up Oracle Integration DR solution for the main capability of Oracle Integration, that is the application integration. Before I take you through the OCI console, let me take you to the official documentation around setting up the DR solution for Oracle Integration. This is the official documentation for setting up DR for Oracle Integration Gen 2 instances. You can refer to this for any guidance with respect to DR process. The integration DR architecture involves provisioning two Oracle Integration instances across distinct cloud regions. These instances can be accessed through a single custom endpoint URL. Additionally, there is an option to employ an OCI DNS zone for resolving the specific custom endpoint name. Within the architecture, there are two designated Oracle Integration instances, one as primary and the other as secondary. Both instances operate simultaneously, yet only the primary one handles incoming traffic initially. In the event that the primary instance becomes unavailable, the DNS record is promptly updated to redirect the traffic flow to the secondary instance. If you wish, you have the option to set up an OCI DNS zone for overseeing the subdomain associated with the Oracle Integration Custom hostname. The OCI DNS zone excels in promptly reflecting changes to the CNAME, ensuring efficient management of your setup. In the DR setup that we are going to discuss today, we would be using CNAME. Prior to initiating the DR configuration process for integration, there are a few prerequisites. First one is to set up a second Oracle integration instance in a separate region, equipped with at least one message pack. To ensure the secondary instance can manage the regular volume, provision it with the same number of message packs as your primary instance. Second is to establish an OCI object storage bucket specifically for your metadata migration. Third is to acquire a custom hostname along with the corresponding SSL certificate. While implementing the FSDR for Oracle integration, you need to ensure that the metadata is regularly synchronized between the primary and the standby instance using CI-CD. You can use Jenkins or a similar tool to implement CI-CD for your instances and have the metadata synchronized. Now, let me take you through the steps that you need to perform to set up disaster recovery solution for the integrations. Login into your OCI tenancy. On the Oracle Cloud Get Started page, select the region in the upper right where you want to create your Oracle integration instance. Once created, the instances are visible only in the region in which you create. On the Oracle Cloud Get Started page, click the menu in the upper left corner to display the services you can provision. Open the navigation menu and click Developer Services. Under Application Integration, click Integration. From the compartment list, click through the hierarchy of compartments and select the one in which you want to create the instance. You may need to expand the plus icon to find the compartment to use. Compartments can contain other compartments. It may take several minutes for the new compartments to appear after the policy has been created. Now click on the Create button. You can provide the name of the instance and select Oracle Integration Gen 2, select the appropriate addition and the message pack. You have to follow the same steps for two different regions. I have created one Oracle Integration instance in Ashburn and the other one in Phoenix. Now that the instances are set up, the next step would be to configure a custom hostname to both the instances. You can follow the Oracle Integration official documentation to do that. Select a hostname for an instance and register it with the DNS provider. Secure an SSL certificate from a trusted certificate authority specifically for your chosen hostname. Within your OCI tenancy, choose a compartment and establish an OCI vault dedicated to storing the acquired certificate. Save the certificate as a secret within the OCI vault. Once done, you can configure the hostname by clicking the Edit button against the Oracle Integration instance and entering the hostname while selecting the Saved Secret. You have to repeat the same steps 
for both the instances, making sure that the configured host name is same so that the applications and users can access Oracle integration with the same URL regardless of which instance is active in the background. Once you have configured the custom host name for your Oracle integration instances, incorporate an OCI DNS zone either via OCI console or through the APIs. Within the zone, include the Oracle integration custom host name as a CNAME record. Upon successfully implementing these changes, proceed to updating your domain setting to utilize the OCI DNS name servers. Now that both the instances are set up, next step is to migrate the metadata from the primary instance to the standby instance. You can export the metadata either by using REST APIs to export the metadata and import the same, or by using the Oracle integration UI to export and import the metadata. For this DR setup, I have kept it simple and used the export import functionality from the UI. To achieve that, first thing that you will have to do is to configure the instance with object storage bucket details, where you will have to provide the Swift URL and the credentials. You can refer the official documentation to set this up in both the instances. Once configured, you can export the metadata from primary instance and import it into the secondary instance via object storage bucket. Subsequently, in order to keep both your integration instances in sync, you can employ continuous integration, continuous deployment, that is CI-CD, by leveraging the REST APIs. Once the instances are configured for the DR and metadata is synced, the next step would be to create trusted applications, which can be used to authenticate with OAuth. You can follow the documentation to create the trusted application for both the instances. I have selected the grant type as client credentials instead of authorization code. Once the trusted application is created, note down the client ID and client secret. It will be used to connect to Oracle integration instances using REST APIs. Store the client secret in the OCI vault as a secret. You would be configuring the vault secrets OCI ID in the FSDR scripts. Also make sure that you add the trusted application to an appropriate role to access Oracle integration instances. So these are the steps that you need to follow to configure your Oracle integration instances for the purpose of DR or FSDR. In the next videos, we would talk more about the scripts used and also how to create an FSDR plan and execute it. Thank you.